the movement cry. I'll say that. I won't give anything away. But it did. I was like, whoa, oh God, what's happening? Is this water on my face? What is happening? Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome to the Geeky Sandbox. So today we're going to be doing a non-spoiler review over the movie Creed 3. Creed 3 is in the line of many movies that we're going to try to talk about. You guys can't see because it's kind of cut off on my dry erase board, but up here I'm kind of taking a couple of movies a day and doing reviews for them and then setting them up for me to be able to edit. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys about the stuff that I've been watching. But anyways, yes, Creed 3. Creed 3 is one of those movies where I did not think I was going to go see it. And then YouTube said, you know what you need? You need a bunch of ads that are not just regular ads, but the full trailer for Creed 3. And it like intrigued me so much that I was like, you know what? I never really saw Creed 1 all the way through. Let me go back and watch Creed 1, then get into Creed 2, and see. Look, we'll see how I'm feeling. Because I felt super invested in the idea of what it was supposed to be, because I heard that Michael B. Jordan was directing Creed 3, and obviously all the other stuff aside with uh, Sylvester, 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 why can't I say his name? <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, and some of the unfortunate drama that's going on with the producer and things like that. I was excited for Michael B. Jordan to kind of get behind a director's seat. Him uh, coming back into that role, Jonathan Majors being able to play the the character that he was playing seemed very intriguing to me. Um, just like the story, that idea. So I was like, maybe I'll go back. So um, here we are now reviewing Creed 3, even though we never reviewed Creed 1 or 2 on this channel. So as we know, the first Creed movie was co-written and directed by Ryan Coogler. And we know Ryan Coogler from the likes of Black Panther and Fruitvale Station for myself. So remember that word co-written because Sylvester Stallone helped write the first Creed movie as well as Aaron Covington. And for those of you that don't know, Creed is a continuation of the story of Rocky. You might be wondering, which, you know, I, I can't be surprised. <laughs> there are a lot of movies where people may not know, they know the name of it, but they may not know what it's about. But Rocky. Move. If you've heard of a training montage, then you have some idea of what Rocky may or may not be. Rocky was one of the like breakout roles for Sylvester Stallone. And it follows a boxer named Rocky, who's an underdog who gets a shot against this, this champion named Apollo Creed. And just keep that in your pocket for now. But you know, the movie Rocky <laughs> spans upon like five movies, the climbing of the steps at, at the Philadelphia Museum and the like the fist in the air and like the montage music and all that stuff. It's more than that though. It is a story about, you know, being an underdog and rising above and learning lessons about love and lost and moving on and things like that, even battling your own demons. And I think a lot of that shows itself in the Creed franchise. And so Ryan Coogler, Sylvester Stallone, and um, and others, they got together. They were like, hey, you know what? What if we made a franchise about Apollo Creed's son? By the way, there are going to be spoilers for Rocky in this and Creed 1 and Creed 2. So if you have not seen those other movies, I do suggest that you wait on watching. As we know, Apollo Creed dies in the ring and that is revisited. Uh, quite a bit as it is a part of who Adonis is and helps kind of shape him into the boxer that we know now. Going back to Creed 3. Creed 3 is the story just about Adonis. There's no Rocky. There's no, you know, what if I do this or that? Like Creed 3 is solely about Ad Adonis and him not being the, the low man anymore. Him not being the underdog anymore. Him overcoming that officially. At this point, Adonis Creed is living a great life. He's kind of accepted his role as being Apollo's Cre Apollo Creed's son because that was something he ran from a lot within the first and second movie. And now he's just fully embracing it. And he's actually using his power and his skills and his finances to help continue to run the gym, help bring other young boxers that were like himself into the fold and help them become champion. So he's at a retired place. His wife, Bianca, who's played by Tessa Thompson, they have a child together. Very, very, very beautiful family. They are learning how to sign together and things like that. And so things seem pretty chill. In comes Jonathan Majors' character, Dame, who is an old childhood friend of Adonis. And all these uh, terrible memories come rushing back to him. And Dame isn't just back to be back. He actually wants to be champion because the whole premise is Damon, he actually went to prison because of something I won't 
fully explain because it'll spoil a lot of the plot but he feels like hey before I went to prison I was going to be one of the best boxers and it sucks that while I was behind bars you took my dream so it's a struggle between you know am I trying to like protect his friendship or am I trying to, am, or am I trying to protect my legacy oh are, are you actually threatening my family okay is this a pride thing and so it all comes down to trying to you know figure that out I know that there's a mixed feeling about this movie which I'll get into that in a minute but regarding the performances I thought everybody did a great job I thought Jonathan Majors did awesome Michael B Jordan did great Tessa Thompson did great um, even our young actress Mila Davis Kent and Mila Davis Kent has also been in one episode of The Residence. Yeah, so she did great as the daughter. And of course, Felicia Rashad as Mama Cree was great. I don't know why we would be surprised by that, but amazing stuff here. I thought that they worked really well together. I thought that they gave a part of themselves to these characters. Regarding the script, I know that this wasn't everyone's favorite Creed movie. I personally really, really enjoyed it. I know that people really wanted um, Rocky to be a part of the story, but I understand that like even in interviews here, I have one pulled up. Michael B. Jordan kind of explains why Creed 3 is missing Rocky from a story standpoint. And obviously we have the real life things going on with um, Sylvester Stallone and some of the rights and things going on with Rocky and producing and things like that. I wanted the story to go a slightly different way, not like bumping heads on Michael B. Jordan, but regarding the other producer, I think his name was Irwin. Um, and that goes way back to like OG Rocky. So that's something that has nothing to do with Michael B. Jordan and the other cast. From a story standpoint, yes, it was weird that they never mentioned where Rocky was. It's just like, he's just gone. And so they never really talk about it. And so I thought that that was kind of a weird hole in the story personally, but I understand you have to work around those real life, like, hey, I don't wanna be a part of this project this time. But I do like the way that Michael B. Jordan was spinning it when he was talking about it. He just said, you know what? It's time for Adonis to stand on his own. Obviously, Sylvester Stallone kicked off the Rocky franchise. Sylvester and Rocky's DNA is through this entire franchise. You can't have these movies without that. That underdog spirit, I think, connects the underdog and all of us. And that was what I was saying. I do feel like that spirit of what Rocky is about is there. I think that that aspect of what Rocky is, is there, even though Rocky's not there, being Adonis's coach anymore. Because at this point, Adonis doesn't need a coach. He's Seems like he's totally fine, well established in his career to the point where he can like retire. And then the whole point of the story is him coming back out of retirement to deal with this uh, friend that's resurfacing in boxing terms. He also says, I think what we love about these movies so much is that we see somebody that's going through hardships, that's able to rise from the ashes and reach the mountaintop. And we connect with that. Sylvester Stallone, when he was asked about it, he called it a regretful situation because he didn't want to miss out on it, but that's just where his heart was at the time. It was taken in a direction that's quite different than I would have taken it. But Sylvester Stallone never wished Michael B. Jordan any ill. And he still was very much so like, hey, I'm a, I'm a sentimentalist and I really, really, really wish him well. The philosophy that Michael B. Jordan wanted to go was, I kind of want this story to get a little darker. I want these hardships and Sylvester Stallone was like, you know what? I don't mind these hardships. I think our characters need a little bit of that to get beat up, but I don't want it to go to these darker places. And he just said he feels like people have enough darkness already. And I think that's just where their ideas just kind of split. But yeah, I think that they, that all of what Michael B. Jordan said is sprinkled throughout the script. I still think you get that Rocky spirit. I still think you get that underdog, uh, being turned into an underdog again because the situation that comes from this friend returning puts Adonis in a very uncomfortable situation where he's at the bottom again. And he's this underdog because he's retired. He hasn't been fighting for X amount of years and he has to dust himself off, dust the gloves off, if you will, to kind of get himself back to tip top shape to be able to handle the situation with his friend. I did hear that there was some stuff cut out of the script with the plot regarding Bianca and things like that. I don't know if adding more or less would have really helped the script. I think adding more would have probably hurt the script because I think the, the beats were just fine. I saw the movie about two times and I don't feel at any point was I ever bored or tired, but I was like, like I said, Rocky not being there was something that I was like, hmm, are they at least gonna address it? But they never addressed it. And um, I do wonder what that would have looked like had they done that. The music was amazing. I really did like the training montage that they put together in this one. J. Cole was on it and I immediately 
was trying to find it and it took a while until it was available but I can't stop listening to it. It's really 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 good. But I suggest that you guys listen to the score. The movie made me cry once that shocked me. The movie made me cry. I'll say that. I won't give anything away. But it did. I was like whoa what god what's happening? Is this water on my face? What is happening? The rating that I am going to give Creed 3 is three and a half out of five geeks. Yeah, like I said, I thought that the old meeting the new was a nice thing for them to do with Creed 3, showing Adonis' journey going from this whole underdog thing to trying to stand on his own to suddenly be, suddenly being put back into this underdog position because his past that he has to face is bringing him to his knees, a past that he has buried so deep that his mother helped him bury it a little bit and like even his uh, wife doesn't know anything about it and he's forced to confront it. I thought that they handled all that very well. Like all those things coming together very nicely. Our new actors getting involved and our new characters. Like I thought all that worked together very well too. But yeah, I suggest that you watch Creed 3 if you've never seen the other movies. I binged 1 and 2 on HBO Max and it was a nice experience. But yes guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a like rating down below. And let me know, have you seen Creed 3? I'm not a huge boxing person and even I enjoyed these movies. So let me know your thoughts. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.